Hi everyone. So in this video, we're going to be looking at random sampling. So actually, in a way, we've already done a lot of random sampling before in this class. Um, and basically random sampling, there's two different ways to kind of think about it. So the big, the big way I normally think about it is you take a bag um, and you have marbles in it, right? Um, either you're going to take when you take a marble out, either you keep it out or you put it back in. Um, and this is really um, kind of the big idea in random sampling. So basically for random sampling, you start off with some large population um, and you want to designate two categories of people, either people who did something or didn't. So like someone who needs glasses or someone who doesn't need glasses, people who like the color red or don't like the color red. Uh, basically categories should be opposites of one another. So in, a, in other words, we want to have two complements, two complementary sets. We then take a smaller um, uh, portion of this large population. Um, so we just take a few marbles out of the bag. In other words, we take some subset of the large population um, and we look at what happens in the small population. And based off the small populations, we want to say what happens in the larger population. Um, and we'll see this better in the kind of examples. Um, but ideally, looking at the small population will tell us information about the large population. So information about something small gives us information about something big. Um, and like I said, there's two main ways of doing this. In this talk, we'll kind of look at what's called, um, there's two main ways. There's, um, I've already given a hint at the first one, uh, sampling with replacement, Sampling with replacement. Uh, and the second one is sampling without replacement. So let's look at sampling with replacement in this lecture and this video and then um, go from there. So sampling with replacement. So what we have here is we take um, a population of n people. So um, think Toronto, think Ontario. Um, yeah, think Toronto. We have n number of people, right? So n number of people who live in Toronto. So some big population. And we take some small number of people within this population, which are drawn at random. Um, and the thing is when we draw a person, we're going to draw this like a marble out of a bag. We take the marble out. So we, we ask an individual some question and then we put them back in. Uh, so we put the marble back in. So in other words, a person can be asked the same question twice. So we might ask the same person multiple times. So this is something we might have to consider. So in particular here, um, what I basically said is, let me highlight the key points. So N is the number of people. Um, and the, the N, let N be the number of people in a sample. So these N individuals are drawn one at a time um, where each individual has the same chance of being chosen. But once they're drawn, they're put back into the large population. They are put back into the large population. So a person can be chosen more than once. And this is a key part. This is why it's with replacement. Um, therefore, what we end up having is if you remember our counting things, we're, we're going to have is a sequence. We choose one person, we choose someone else, we choose, or we choose a person, we choose a person, we choose a person. But each of the options gives us n big n kind of options here. So that gives us that we have n to the n different possible sequences, uh, different possible um, ways of ordering these people. That's a lot of people. Um, and here, one of the big things to note is that since we're putting the, pop the number of people back in, n could be larger than big n. Um, we're not stopping this. I can pull, if I have 20 people in my large population and I pull 600 times, that's okay. That doesn't guarantee that every person will be chosen though, as a note. So let's look at um, an example um, and then we'll actually calculate this example. Um, yeah. So let's look at um, this in an example. So an easy way to kind of think about this is marbles. So I keep talking about marbles. So we have some bag of marbles and what I want to know is what is in this bag? Um, how, what's, the pro what's the proportion of red and blue marbles? So we'll say red and blue. Uh, um, marbles in this bag um, and see what um, the, the distribution kind of gives. Um, 
So what we do is we take a marble out, we look at the color, and we put it back in. We shuffle, we put take a marble out, we look at the color, we put it back in. And each time we're recording this information. Now, one of the things we know is if I let R be the number of red marbles and B be the rest of them, so the blue marbles, well, we know that R plus B is equal to big N, right? Like, we kind of already know some information. We know that um, all the marbles are either red or not. Um, and we have N marbles. And so what we know is the probability that a marble is red is actually given by this formula. P is equal to R over N. This is the number we're trying to find. We're trying to figure out P. Um, and notice here, since everything is interval, uh, or everything is independent, and we're choosing like something is yes or no, this is the binomial distribution. And since P is static, right, P is not changing, but N is increasing, what we're going to want to use here is the normal approximation because we're using P is static. So the key part here is P is static. Um, and so here we have mu and um, our standard deviation. Um, and we're going to use, since we're increasing our N, we want to increase our N. Um, what we can use is the law of large numbers. So we're starting to use all the things that we've been learning in the past few lectures, large, large law of large numbers. What we know is if n is large enough, then we're going to know exactly how many are red and how many are blue. Um, and if you recall our last section on confidence intervals, what we want is if we want a confidence interval of 99.9%, um, all we have to do is do this n number of times, and then what we're going to have is some interval um, where p hat is going to be the observed frequency. This is our relative frequency, what we see. Um, and this gives us um, basically our interval of what we want. Um, if we want 95%, this actually is, um, ah, this is uh, minus 3. So this is minus 3 to 3. Uh, then actually all we end up having is an interval of 1 over square root of n. So if we want, we can actually cut our interval in half, make it half as long. Um, just by looking at 95% instead of 99%. Um, so I'll stop here for this one. In the next video, we'll look at an example of this. Um, so I will see you then.